Okay, what we're down there doing is uh, trying to get a little dirt dug. There's still some frost in this ground, but it's still it's coming out pretty good. I want to get down in there and get some of this soil. Uh, don't take a whole lot. Right there is enough. I'm going to send this off and have it tested for the quality of it. And then it's going to tell me what kind of fertilization, what kind of liming I need to have done in the future. This is the first step right here to successful food plotting. They make a lot of little tools that you can dig this out with, but uh, a spade does just as well. So this is either the first step to success or the first step to failure. If you're trying to get the most out of your seed and your food plot, this is where it starts. Get a soil sample. That's going to let you know what the format of your soil is, and you'll know it'll be, have recommendations on what you have to do to bring it up to between 6, 5, and 7 uh, on the uh, sample. And that's what you need for most of your products. So with that said, that's what we're doing today, March 16th. What I'm going to do, as you see, there's a bunch of debris in here, and I'm going to come in here in the near future and get rid of this mall of flower rose and this undergrowth and uh, plant this in Whitetail uh, Institute clover. And uh, it's back in here where it's secluded at, but I need to tear some of this understory out. Basically, as you can see, the trails here are uh, really heavily laden. And they're headed right to that whitetail clover. And I don't want to tear all this, the cover out because that's what's drawing them in here is the proximity of the food plot. But all this marble flower rose and those uh, uh, hazelnut bushes, dead trees and stuff like that, they're not producing anything. They're coming out. And I probably got a good, another good half acre here that uh, I want to utilize for uh, Whitetail Institute Clover, but that, that's where it starts at today is uh, getting that uh, soil sample dirt ready to go off to the laboratory. Okay, this was that lush green Whitetail Institute Clover field that was drawing all those deer in here uh, since last year. If you remember, we planted this with the aid of an old Christmas tree. And you've seen the results, it was lush, 12 inches high, it was just beautiful growth. But you can also see now how it's been cropped down. It, actually, that turkey turd right there is taller than the clover. But you can see it's starting to reemerge. Uh, well, right now it's no taller than that turkey turd, so it's got a long way to go. But what that's showing you is the grazing pressure that this had. And there's just deer poop all over this place. So they've spent a lot of time here grazing on this. And they've ate it right down, right to the dirt. I mean, uh, it's really essential to make sure you got this fertilized and you gotta have proper conditions because it's really gonna draw them in. Like I say, this is all deer crap and <laughs> that clover is uh, it ain't even taller than a piece of deer poop. So, uh, like I say, I can show you videos of this same field where the bucks were on and they were really using it extensively. And over here on this corner right here, uh, this was a main scrape. And I think every buck that was ever around come over to this situation and pawed in that scrape. And off that little pin oak tree so that stays because you can still see uh, there's a fresh deer track in that scrape uh, where they came through since the ground is stalled out and there was a lot of activity in, on this field but uh, we'll have to fertilize and really get this growing back up once it starts growing and it and it it already is re-emerging like you can see right here, 
is that's at the end of my finger, brand new clover ready to grow. The only problem with that is those deer can find that also. And I hope they don't keep it mowed off. I hope they move off to another food source, a natural food source, and, and give this a chance to come back. But uh, it, it will come back. We're going to do a soil test on this field right now. I'm going to dig out some soil to make sure we we still know what the the temperature, not temperature, but the uh, the favorability of of uh, growing good uh, clover on this still continues. So even though we've had a crop on it, let's do another soil test so we can send that in and make sure that we're still got healthy soil here because it needs it because I'll tell you what, you've seen the deer activity on this field and where we were at, we're going to go into that cover right there and clean that out and make that uh, expand this field because you've got to monitor your deer herd and once you see the magnetism to it or uh, how they gravitate to that food source uh, you're going to have to keep enlarging it so that they don't overgraze it. I would say this this was pretty well grazed over. It, uh, I mean you can see over in here right in this area here where you've got real good growth here on March uh, sixth after an extreme winter and they got new growth in there. They had some uh, uh, leaf foliage that dropped in here helped insulate that and it's you can see where either the turkeys have been in there scratching or the deer have. So let's get this other uh, uh, soil sample taken and get on down the road. Yeah we'll go out here in the middle and get a good sample and Keep it separate from the last sample so we know what this dirt is. Yeah, it would only been two weeks. It would only been two weeks ago that on this particular field it was eight below zero, and you can see we can thrust that spade down pretty deep right now. So there's that's really went down in there. Uh, now that ground was completely frozen just two weeks ago and right now we're getting a good foot of penetration into that dirt so that's amazing how, how fast that frost came out of that ground and, uh, and we want to get that down in there and get get a good sample so, get down Want to get down in there? Now that what this is going to tell us is our fertilizing. We won't be putting any nitrogen on this, but it could tell us what our phosphorus and potassium levels are, and if we need to add more lime. So it's real critical to monitor your food plots, even though you've already had them established. It doesn't hurt to go back and uh, check on them, the health of them, see what kind of vitamins Basically, you know, your body needs vitamins to sustain certain growth, and so does your soil. And then the vitamins, it's, it's in the form of fertilizer. And that ain't no bull. Even though if you had access to cattle poop, that wouldn't be bad either. So. And what's nice about doing this, this is going to help you fruit plotters really expand. And because I don't know what this soil is, it grew a good crop, but you owe it to yourself and your financial expenditure to get the most out of it you can. And this is where it starts with 
your uh, soil testing. So at least we'll know what we got to go. Now we'll go over it and tell you what we got when we get it back from the laboratory. Yeah, another important spot or important thing to con be concerned with is location. Now this is a winding creek that comes through here and then it goes up into the hardwood timbers. And over in here is where we've elected to put that food plot. Now you got to keep in mind that straight northwest or straight north in that direction. So that's going to enable me to come in from that back side, come in and put my stand on that end of the food plot on a southwest wind. And that's accessible. I can come in and, and get in there. And as I pan back around here, as you can see all the cover down in here, there, that's what gives the magnetism of this food plot is the cover. And they can lay up high. I can get in here with a southwest wind and hunt and the deer can come from off in that direction which is the southwest up in the hills and uh, they can gravitate over here follow this creek bed if you notice that creek stream down there that's heavily laden with deer trails uh, where they traveled up and down this creek and uh, in the late fall or in fall they gravitate right here so now you got to on a normal year, you have water source, and you got your uh, whitetail clover, and it's all in a real, real isolated uh, area where those big bucks that you're hunting for that you've seen will be out here in broad daylight. Uh, right over there is the pin oak that we were talking about. That was one of the scrapes that they were working, and if you're sitting up in there. That particular tree up there with a the southwest wind, you're going to be able to monitor this whole plot with no wind coming on it. The only bad part about that is when I put it, get up in that tree up there, is you have the southwest wind and for, or sun in your face at evening. So, but if you turn the stand and get it on the back side of the tree, you can alleviate most of that also. So, uh, uh, location, location, location. And this is what makes it at a super good uh, location. It's the density down here. Then all of a sudden they have an oasis with high protein food created from North American uh, uh, Whitetail Institute. And um, that just makes it just that much more better. But if you was to put one of these out in the open, you'd still draw deer. But right here you've got everything. You've got cover, dense, thick cover, canopied over cover with, with natural mass crops up in the hills. you got the hills to where the deer can bed down. And if they go up there and, and take a headwind up that hill with a southwest wind, uh, they go up there and the wind's coming over and they can look down on this field. But, you know, you got access to getting in here also, so you got to remember that. And we got plenty heavy fo forage back over in there that I can sneak through there and get up undetected plus you got water so you, you, you've got location you've got water you've got food source you got seclusion you've got all this stuff working for you and that's what brings those bucks and does out here on this but uh, we're going to make it bigger and not all bigger is not always better but uh, with the grazing pressure that this has shown that it has it, uh, it'd be wise to make it a uh, half acre to an acre larger in size. It, um, so that's how you want to go about selecting a, a, a food plot to hunt over. This is a hunting plot, not a, a destination plot. So access to getting in is really important. And uh, I can get in here in the evening. I would more so, I wouldn't hunt this in the morning because you don't know what's out here already. Your trail cameras tell you they're here all day, but you might, may want to just hold off and wait until evening. You sneak into your stand, and believe you me, you've, you've seen the videos. The bucks do pile in here because it's got everything working for it that you need to have working in a food plot. You just can't throw the seed out 
if you don't have all the factors in order and this area has them all in order as you can see from the previous videos of the deer that used this. So that's it from the non-typical Norwalkian uh, beginning of uh, food plots 2014 March 16th. So uh, we'll get this here area cleared out. We'll get the skitter down in here and get that cleaned out real quick and uh, be another day and, and we'll get to making this bigger.